Our first review of the day is going to be for the series Poker Face. Poker Face, which is a Peacock original. This is starring Natasha Lyonne. Um, and Natasha Lyonne, this is a series created by also by Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson, who I just previously stated. Uh, fame of creating mm -hmm. The Last Jedi. Also the Knives Out films. Um, he also did a bunch of smaller films as well, like Brick, um, which I absolutely love that movie. That's a movie starring mm -hmm. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which actually he makes a appearance in this series as well. Um, in this mm -hmm. uh, Peacock original show, so you have the titular character uh, who's played by Natasha Lyonne, um, who has this uncanny ability. She can tell when anybody is lying. Um, she just looks at them, and then they say mm -hmm. something, and she can all automatically just say bullshit. She can just call out bullshit just mm -hmm. like that. Um, and she just this weird kind of supernatural ability. And it, she kind of uses it to her effect, you know, kind of going around in this kind of cross country type trip because she's on the run, mm -hmm. as you see in the beginning of the first episode, uh, from these mobsters. And she's mm -hmm. kind of going around, even though she's not a detective, she's just some random woman going around, kind of solving these mm -hmm. murders. Um, it's almost kind of like you would you would start to think she would start to realize, like, wait a minute, am I like the angel of death? Because every time I interact with <laughs> these people, uh, somebody ends up dead. It's like that is just not normal uh, what, whatsoever <laughs> to have this many people that you interact with end up dead. Um, you would think that'd be some <laughs> sign or something, but uh, I, I, I guess not. Um, so she just ends up, you know, coming across these people in her journey. Uh, when she's kind of on the run um, and mm -hmm. then ends up kind of solving these things. Um, it, the, very much, I was looking up about the show, so uh, very much the style of this show um, is very much reminiscent of something like you would see like Columbo. Um, if you ever seen Columbo, mm -hmm. uh, Columbo was a show that premiered way back, it was I think back in the 90s was that show, Columbo. Uh, it starred Peter Falk and mm -hmm. uh, it was about this guy. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, Columbo, Columbo was like the 60s. It, it was like a uh, 1971 oh, is 19th. when it first aired. Wow, 19. Okay, so way back. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, and and something that Columbo was famous for because everybody knows uh, knows of course the Agatha Christie style of uh, whodunit stuff like Murder She Wrote, but Columbo, it was all about the how catch him. You would always see the murder, the the killer, everything that led up to the titular, the focused murder in every episode. And the whole fun of the show was the how catch him is how, how uh, Columbo or in this case, Charlie catches every single one of these killers. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, that's the setup here. Um, and it's very similar. Like when you watch the show, it's, it's, it's on Peacock. Uh, it's a Peacock original, mm -hmm. but if you ever watch like back when USA used to do shows like psych or monk, um, even maybe something like Burn Notice, uh, which is funny enough, they actually show an episode of Burn Notice in the show when, mm -hmm. like, uh, Bring yeah. Benjamin Bratt's character, he's at a, a like some shitty motel and they have Burn Notice playing on the TV. It's very much like Case of the Week. You know, each each week mm -hmm. she's got a new case, new thing to deal with, and that's very much how those shows were. Those shows were very much like Case of the Week. Every new week there's a new case, um, and mm -hmm. and new things kind of going on. And and I think you know if you like that kind of style of TV, this would be something for you. Um, I was a fan of those type of shows, you know, like Psych and Monk. I'd watch those shows, get into oh, them. Yeah. Um, they were fun shows, you know, they fun little detective shows <laughs> that you would watch. You know, again, like I said, you know, something that's you know a little loose. Um, you know, they always had like a quirky thing about them. Like with Monk's character, he was like had severe OCD, so you know <laughs> what I mean. That but he was also a genius detective on top of that. With in Psych, you had uh, that character where you know he pretended to be psychic. Um, and solve cases with the you know the police department um you know mm -hmm. so her 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 thing is like like i said she's got this uncanny ability to tell when people are lying um so she's she as a normal person is trying to go around and stop and and kind of uh, solve these cases and sometimes she doesn't always you know get justice in some cases mm -hmm. because she just can't because she has no real authority here yeah, um, she, yeah and that's something that i think is a fun subversion because ryan johnson something that he loves to do in all of his things and every one of his projects is to kind of subvert expectations and you hear detective show you hear that uh <clears throat> that uh, natasha leone is gonna be this uh de this like this uh crime solver week to week and you think every episode ends with her physically catching the killer they don't more often than not, she's just setting the setting everything in motion for the actual killer to get caught. Yeah, 
you know, try to set them up, trying to get them to reveal themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny how she kind of moved throughout the show. And look, people know Natasha Lyonne. She was in things like Origins of New Black. Uh, she was kind of big mm-hmm. in that show. Um, she was also big in the show that is on Netflix. Uh, what's that show called? Um, oh, Russian Doll. Uh, yeah, right. Ru- yeah, Russian Doll, a show she uh, co-created, executive produced, writes, and directs for. Oh, wow. I didn't know she did all that for uh, Russian Doll. Yeah. I, um, I hear that <clears throat> show is amazing, too, uh, Russian Doll. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, oftentimes she doesn't really have any authority to do anything. It's funny how she can, you know, push upon these people. Because normally you think that the people just sound like, well, I don't got to listen to you. What the fuck? I ain't got to show you footage. I ain't gotta, <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't got to do any of this. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's like it's like it was a fun thing every time she asked where most characters would just tell her to fuck off. Yeah, because it's like I don't have to answer your question. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, fuck are you? yeah but uh, so that's kind of always funny to kind of see <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and, you know, this being kind of a case of the week type thing, you have people come in like you'll see a huge, you know, cast of, you know, uh, actors coming in, mm-hmm. in each episode. You see the trailer like you'll have he'll have a huge list of people coming in like you have mm-hmm. Nick Nolte, you got Joe Gordon-Levitt, you have um, uh, Benj- uh, like I said, I mentioned Benjamin Bratt, um, I mentioned Adrian Brody's yeah. in this, um, you have Chloe uh, Servini, you have uh, Judith Light, uh, Little Real Howery's in this, Ron Perlman's in this, Stephanie Hughes in this. Um, Stephanie Hsu, I'm sorry, from uh, everything. Yeah, dude, dude. yeah, Academy Award nominee Stephanie Hsu. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you know, so like you have a bunch of bunch of you know uh, Tim Blake Nelson. You got a bunch of actors who come in um, throughout mm-hmm. these episodes, and each. I mean, I think they do a really good job, you know, bringing these actors in and 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 in the roles that they delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Nolte, uh, he comes in. I don't know if that's just Nick Nolte 24 seven or that's real Nick Nolte. I don't know if that's <laughs> acting anymore or what, but you know, he kind of. Uh, Dude who's just kind of bitter, kind of a recluse, just wants to shut himself off in his shed, work on his projects, and is kind of an alcoholic. No, that's not inspired by Nick Nolte at all. Yeah. Uh, what were some of your thoughts uh, on Poker Face? Poker Face, it, watching it, it reminded me a lot of those, those like, case of the week shows that I loved growing up. It reminded me a lot of stuff like Monk, of stuff like Burn Notice, in that you got a very different even though this is uh this keeps a very consistent feel for every episode every setting every uh cast of characters they bring a different flavor to it that keeps it interesting that keeps it from from growing stale like every episode and ryan johnson said this in uh, in an interview about this that every episode was kind of like this deep dive into this little pocket of America that you might not normally see. Like you get an episode that is, uh, that's about like a Texas barbecue scene. You get, uh, a peek at, a like a middle America retirement community. You get like the punk scene in an episode, which is one of my favorite ones. Mm. Yeah. That's an interesting uh, outlook. Yeah, you do kind of get, a, like I said, she's traveling cross country uh, because the reason she's on the run is, you know, she had a situation with her friend. Um, her friend ended up being murdered um, <clears throat> by uh, the people who own the casino that they ber- both work at. And, you know, she, again, doing her thing, you know, being this master of, you know, being able to detect when people are lying, she figures it out. Um, then she ends up on, you know, on the run from these uh, these owners of this casino. And, you know, that's what kind of, you know, brings her into mm-hmm. this kind of uh, mix with all these other different cast of characters, meeting all these kind of different mm-hmm. people. Um, and you say one of your favorite episodes was the punk rock episode, the episode with Chloe Savini, mm-hmm. uh, who's in it, uh, where they play like this, uh, like loser heavy metal band. Uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, this, this, yeah, this loser heavy metal band that is way past their prime. They were kind of a one hit wonder. <laughs> And the one hit only benefited the, one of the former members of it. Yeah. And she's like all the other members, they're just doing, you know, kind of basic jobs. She's working at like, it seems like, like a Home Depot or something like that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that was kind of a good episode. Like I said, they do the style where you see the murder first. They set that up like, you know, here's these characters. Here is the murder. 
then it goes back and shows you Natasha Leone, who plays a character named Charlie. That's her. Uh, that's her name. Mm-hmm. And then you see how she's, you know, a part of this as well, and and where she was um, amongst this, and how she almost mm-hmm. also uh, witnessed the murder. Um, so you kind of see that, and and her style is very much also like very Columbo esque. You see her like in her, you know, movements and her mannerisms. Like she'll do this thing where you see in the show where she'll kind of put her head down and she'll kind of scratch her head. You know what I mean? When she's kind of asking. <laughs> question or she'll tilt her head or something like that that is very much you know kind of like if you watch Columbo that is kind of something like he would do he would you know what I mean it's like oh wait a minute one more question I just got one more thing to ask you you know it's always one more question you know what I mean he got eight more questions after that um you know it's never <laughs> just one more and I, I found that pretty good um how did you like her um in as this titular character Oh, um <clears throat> much like any of these uh case of the week type shows it is gonna be what makes or break it breaks it is going to be the presence and charisma of your lead actor and Natasha Leone nails it here and I and I feel like Leone was kind of caught in the middle of that like late 90s boom of teen comedies where everybody else kind of went on to bigger and better things but she was like the one holdout she kind of just kept going along in a lot of smaller projects until Russian Doll really blew up. And that's when people started to take notice of Leon, where it's like, oh my God, she's way more talented than a lot of people are giving her credit for. And she has such a great uh, screen presence every second she's on. Mm. Was Russian Doll, was that before Orange is New Black? Because I feel like Orange is New Black was really more of bigger for her coming mm-hmm. out party, I think. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Orange is a New Black was before that. That's my bad. Yeah. Uh, Cause yeah, I feel like yeah, that was bigger to get people to to really you know recognize to recognize her all over again, um, in in that big series. Um, but yeah, um, I mean she's been in the game for a while now. Like you said, I mean a big movie that she was in was back in the '90s. You mentioned was in you know the late '90s, 1999. But I'm a cheerleader. Mm-hmm. Um, she was in then. That was a big you know teen romantic comedy back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you said her presence is is really great. Um, you know you know, just her personality, you know, she's got kind of this, this voice that's very, like a very distinctive voice that she has kind of the smoky kind of raspy kind of voice. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I, th- I th- think in conversations with people about this show, I've dubbed it the, the, I've been chain smoking every single day for the last 40 years kind of rasp. Mm. Yeah, and then even her fashion choices in this show, like all the kind of different fashion choices that she had throughout the show is also very interesting. But yeah, um, and you know, she truly, you know, this character does care about people, does want to see the best. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it kind of sucks when in some cases where she can't, you know, get the justice she wants and sometimes, and she kind of has to let people go. Um, and and, mm-hmm. and that's always kind of sometimes disappointing there. Um, what did you think about the, you know, the different cast of, uh, you know, these famous actors kind of coming through these episodes. What do you think about that? Hmm. I think kind of an appeal of this show and why they were able to get such a, such an, a just rotating door of absolute heavy hitters for most of these episodes is because a, you're working with a, with a producer like Ryan Johnson, who he is kind of that new hotness a little bit, especially with the knives out movies where they have this in, insane amount of critical acclaim he's always this really fascinating director and screenwriter to work with and you get to just come in for an episode you get to play with the character and get to stretch a lot more than i think a lot of actors kind of don't get to when they have this big long commitment to a project you get a lot of range out of actors that i had kind of overlooked a little bit with uh, certain guest appearances like uh, simon helberg who was on uh, who was on the big bang theory and i think he's great as a recurring character here you get a little bit more range from a guy like charles melton who kind of gets gets thrown into that uh, teen heartthrob role from a lot of stuff like Riverdale. And and I think my absolute favorite episode where you get uh, David Castaneda, who's like a conflicted uh, motel owner, in uh, I think the penultimate episode, the one with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I really liked a lot of the, you know, kind of rotating different, you know, revolving door of different kind of, uh, you know, mm-hmm. big, big time actors that coming through uh just doing one episode the freedom like you said that allows just to come out and do one episode then then head out <laughs> um it's very good um did uh and you mentioned simon hilberg you know he was like this fbi agent come in he's got a nice little bit in here um i don't think there's any really one bad one really of, of 
you know, somebody mm. who uh, comes in. Um, you know, shout out to Tim Blake Nelson. He's not playing a racist this time, so you know, good on him. <laughs> um, you know, hey, and, it's been, it's been a while since Tim Blake Nelson has played a racist. I still think he should have won and won an Emmy for Watchmen. Uh, well, uh, he was uh, racist in the Guillermo. De- you didn't? Did you see Guillermo del Toro's uh, show on Netflix? Ah, oh, fuck! I missed that. Yeah, yeah he, I didn't see Cabinet of Curiosities. Yeah, he was a racist. In that. <laughs> he was a racist in that. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I very much appreciate that. Like the show, um, like I said, it's something that you could see if you ever watched the that that block of lineup on the USA Network. Uh, what was the tagline they mm-hmm. used? Um, I forgot the tagline. Oh, what was it? Uh, fuck. Uh, I've got the exact. Yeah, was USA's what? It, what was it? It was their Friday night rotation. Yeah, I forgot what exactly. Uh, you know, uh, what their slogan was that they would have. Um, you know what I mean when they have the whole lineup there. But um, it is very much something you could see a part of that. A part of something like if you watch Psych or Monk or Burn Notice, mm-hmm. a part of that lineup there, and it would fit snugly there. Um, is this a show that I would say that, you know, amongst all this TV that's out right now on all these mm-hmm. different platforms, is this something you gotta stop to go like, I gotta watch this right now? Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's not. Uh, but it, it makes for a good binge. It's like something like when we talked about Reacher on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good show, a uh, solid show that you'll have probably, uh, I, I had fun watching it. Um, but is it like one of the best shows I'll say that's on TV right now? No, it's not. Uh, mm-hmm. But no. it's just it it's just it plays in its element very well. It's having fun doing it. I think it, it does a great job at executing it, executing its themes, executing its its premise. Um great lead in Natasha Leone. Um so for that, I would say it is um uh, I give it a highest stream for me. Mm-hmm. Uh what about you? So I, I was a big fan of this show. I watched the initial premiere, but it didn't really grab me. So I kind of fell off on it for a while, but I kept hearing every single week it was airing that you know this is this is a really fun watch. You need to get on this, and I just sat down and binged it one day, and I ended up having a lot of fun. But I think a problem with the show is it's the same problem that a lot of episodic TV and just uh, anthologies and stuff that does kind of have this case of the week uh, style to it. It's that it. Some cases are just going to be more interesting or better than others. And I think that is very much the case here, where when the show is hitting with episodes like, uh, for me, uh, for me, like the, I think the third episode, like uh, episode four, nine, and the finale, which I think is awesome. I think that is premiere TV. Everything else was just kind of, it's okay. This is a fun watch. This is very good network style television but would i be rushing out to to watch this week to week like i have been doing with a lot of the uh, other premiere stuff like i have been doing with uh, uh stuff like the last of us stuff like yellow jackets which i'm getting caught up on no not not really but all in all i think this show is still a very fun watch but I think the, the little bit of pacing issues over throughout the 10 episodes, I think I would have to give this a very strong stream. Hmm. Yeah. It isn't, it kind of does fall into that, into that reacher territory where this is great entertaining network style television, which is a kind of TV that I've kind of, I've really missed a while, especially with the, with the age of this uh, prestige television with the age of we're just, taking a script that that couldn't get funding for a feature film and stretching it out to eight to ten episodes i think this does have have a flavor that has been missing from a lot of tv Mm, yeah yeah it's good like i said good network style kind of tv um that you kind of see it's is it you know something that's game changing and something's like like i said stop everything you're doing you got to watch it no it's not but it's still fun it's 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 still Mm -hmm. i think a, a good time to watch um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, a slight spoiler for this, and this is uh, the last episode, which features Ron Perlman, and just her interaction with uh, Ron Perlman in the finale, I think is just a plus Ryan Johnson at his best kind of writing. Yeah, and that's what interested me in in this show. I was like a Natasha Lyonne plus Ryan Johnson. I was like, oh man, that sounds like a good winning combo. Um, and it's going to be like a detective murder mystery type thing. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm even more interested now. Um, 
does this really like you know uh because i don't know because i don't think he did he direct any of these episodes on poker face i don't uh, i don't believe he uh did. yes oh, he, he directed, directed the uh, first two yeah he directed yeah he directed the first two episodes and the finale is directed by uh, he directed the first two episode nine which was the uh the Joseph Gordon-Levitt episode, and uh, Janitza Bravo, who we know from directing Zola, she directed the finale. Yeah. Um, I will say the the penultimate episode, the one with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I think that one's my favorite one. I think that one's my favorite mm-hmm. episode. Um, that That's, yeah, that's the one that uses the dramatic irony of us knowing who the killer is. I think the best out of all of these episodes. Yeah. Um, so I, I really like that one the best. Do you really feel like ryan johnson's like imprint on the show like you feel like if you didn't know that you know he created this mm. he was behind it would you feel like oh yeah i can tell like this is like ryan johnson thing hmm. uh, that's interesting to say because even though as much as i like ryan johnson i'm trying to think of anything in his resume that's that that stands out as saying that this is a Ryan Johnson thing in terms of uh, of his writing or his cinematography. I think everything he does, it's... I'm trying to think how to phrase this. It's like, he has this flavor with all of his projects, but I don't really know how to define it. Mm. Where it's like, where he plays with a lot of uh, subverting expectations, but he still functions within the confines of whatever genre he's writing. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Um, you know, I don't, I think he's got a certain style. I mean, what he does with Knives Out as a murder mystery is not what he does mm-hmm. with Brick as a murder mystery. Like that movie, mm-hmm. if you ever watched yeah, it, it, it's yeah, not what he does. Yeah, yeah e- even with uh, when he plays with sci fi, like, uh, like The Last Jedi is very much distinct from something like Looper. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, you all let us know. If you guys check it out, let us know what you think. Um, so that was um, Poker Face. Two streamants for that.